Hi everybody, my name's Brett LaRanger. I am one of the keepers here at Birds World. And for today's zoo to you, I am here with Pink and Yellow, our two common emus. Uh, and I'm here to talk about today how what we do here at the zoo to keep our animals nice and cool during the summertime because it gets very hot on these mid-August days. So as you can see, I have a hose set up here that's on a somewhat fast trickle system. So the emus use this to kind of cool themselves down during the day. We set up these misters so that way the birds can come by and sit down and cool themselves down. Because even though emus are from native to Australia and it's very arid and hot over there, they need to cool themselves down sometimes. So they would normally find shallow pools of water to sit in and cool themselves down, which if they're clearly not showing any interest right now, but when it gets nice and muddy around here, they'll come by later and they'll sit down in the water and it helps keep themselves nice and cool. Uh, we do this for a lot of our other animals here throughout the zoo, just setting up simple hoses and leaving them on nice misting spray so that way our animals can stay cool. If they don't want to sit in water, some animals will offer uh, special ice treats. So we'll take their favorite enrichment items like fresh berries or nuts, anything like that, and we'll freeze them overnight and offer them during the daytime so that way they can cool themselves down. So, like the ice treats too? Uh, so fortunately not. No, they're not big ice eaters. Uh, they'll, as you can see right now, they prefer to any grass that gets nice and wet, they'll graze at the grass and get the little water droplets off that. Uh, emus mostly eat vegetation, so here at the zoo we feed them a mix of greens, kale, collard greens, romaine, and they get uh, breeder pellets, which uh, a lot of our herbivore birds eat. It's pretty much like a grainy little yellow pellet that provides all their nutrients and supplements that the greens don't provide them with. Now it might be hard to tell the difference between pink and yellow, but the easiest way to, if they ever come closer, is right at their base of their feet they have two colored bands. They have a ye yellow has a yellow one and pink has a pink one. Pink's right there in the front walking away in the shade. Yellow is right here in the back. So you'll kind of notice that pink was walking away as yellow approached. Uh, emus have a social hierarchy system amongst each other. Yellow is the more dominant bird out of the two. Yellow's, a little, I mean, pink's a little more submissive, so she'll usually back away. Yellow will check things out first, and when yellow gets bored and doesn't show interest anymore, then pink will come along and check stuff out. If anyone has any questions in the chat, please, please feel free to comment below and we will get to your questions as soon as we can. Do the two of them get along mostly? Yes, they do. Yeah, they don't really. Every now and then, maybe Yellow will, you'll see her maybe chase Pink around. She's not being aggressive or mean towards her. She's kind of just like, kind of reminding Pink, hey, like, I'm the boss around here, so... Let me figure it out first, and then I'll let you check it out when I'm done. But for the most part, they're pretty calm and gentle with each other. This is what you'll see them doing on a daily basis, just wandering around, kind of relaxing. Can you tell us a little bit about how you work with them here at the zoo and how they're cared for? Sure. So the emus are pretty easy to take care of daily. We will... We will personally go into the yard. We, before we let them out for the day, we do a quick scan of the entire perimeter of the fence line. We make sure that there's no damages or anything like that so the emus don't, or the kangaroos, don't get hurt or accidentally get out. And we look for any kind of rubbish or anything that got blown away overnight. Um, and then once we make sure, I will set up fresh water and food for them for the day. And once that's said and done, I will go into the barn. It might be hard to see from here, but there's a side door way back there. That's their main doorway that they come into the exhibit. So I will go in there. I open up their stalls, and I'll usually let Pink go out first because she'll want to try to get away from Yellow, so that way Yellow doesn't boss her around real quick. And then once Pink's made her way out, then Yellow will head on out. I close that door, and then they're out here for the day. Um, as far as interacting with them, 
Uh, we usually kind of just let them be. Sometimes we'll do emu feeds with guests, so that's when I will come by here or any of my coworkers with their main diet. We'll save their greens off to the side and we will bring out large lettuce leaves that they'll come walk up to the fence line and people get a chance to kind of like take the food from feed the emus. They'll just walk right up and pluck it right out of people's hands. And do you train with the emus? Um, so they don't have necessarily, we did the, uh, the emu feeds was kind of our last time we kind of like trained them to come close to the guests and get used to taking food from guests. But for the most part, we don't really do much training with them. They kind of are kind of more just an exhibit bird. We don't have any major training regimes that we do with them. And how old are these guys? Uh, both pink and yellow are 23 years old. So your average emu in the wild only lives about 10 years on average, but in, in zoos and wildlife parks, they can live much, much longer with uh, human care. So they can average their mid 20s or so. Do you have a favorite kind of fun fact about emu? Uh, so one of my favorite fun facts about the emu is uh, when it comes to parent rearing. Um, so they have an interesting way that they raise their chicks. Uh, Emu, a male and female emu will get together. Females will actually, normally in the wild where males kind of make the first move, female emus tend to actually approach males. You'll hear them make a booming call with, they have this large sack in their throat that helps create this large like drum-like booming noise. You can hear it from a long distance away. And they use that to attract any males that are nearby. They'll set up a nest. Uh, when the female lays her eggs, she's kind of like, that's her main duty. She, once she's done, the male sits on the eggs, and the, the male will sit on the eggs for about 56 days is about the average incubation. And he will hatch them. He will not eat, drink, or anything during that entire time. And once the chicks have hatched, uh, the dad actually takes care of them all. The females don't usually have anything to do with chick rearing. It's all kind of single dad is how the emus live and male emus will um, if there are chicks that either lost a parent or are just orphaned sometimes uh, male emus will actually take in other chicks to join their chicks if they come across any stranded orphaned ones and i know a question we get a lot is can they fly that is a great question. Uh, no, they cannot fly. So emus are part of a family of flightless birds called the rat tights. So they are the second largest bird in that group. The one that's slightly larger than them is the ostrich. And there are three other birds in that family group. There are cassowaries, rheas, which are a smaller version of these guys found in South America, and kiwis. But they do have wings. It's very hard to see. Their wings are only about eight inches long, but they do have vestigial wings that they will, sometimes when they run, you'll see them kind of flap them, but it's so, they're so tiny and up against their body that they blend in with their body feathers. Are they endangered? No, emus are not endangered. Um, these guys are actually very widespread. Um, in Australia, they're kind of, uh, they're actually, a lot of people will farm them just like we do with our chickens over here. Someone commented and said they were lucky enough to be able to feed both of them during one of those tours here. Oh yeah. <laughs> Big leaves of lettuce. Yeah, so, yeah, so they can be sometimes intimidating walking because they're a very big bird. These guys average five to six feet in height and weigh over a hundred pounds, so they can be very intimidating at first, but they're very gentle and their beaks almost, they kind of remind me of like the rubber on traffic cones. They don't have a sharp beak and they'll just kind of like bump you when they try to grab the food out of your hand. But they're very gentle girls. They, all they want to do is eat from you and it's a lot of fun to feed them. Do either of them have any kind of funny personality traits that are, stand out to you? Um... It's kind of like what I said before, it was like Yellow just is very, she kind of reminds me kind of like a diva. She's very like, I need to be in charge. Let me scout out everything that's going on. Like, 
pink, you hold back. Like, I'll let you know when it's okay to stand under this tree, something like that. And then pink's just kind of like the, she's the very quiet, shy, like, I'm just minding my own business. And she just kind of, she kind of more like goes with the flow where yellow is a lot more serious. Like when I let them out in the morning, pink kind of like tiptoes, taking her sweet old time, where yellow walks with this like stomping assertive look that she's like, all right, I need to go scout out what's going on today. Well, and I think we have time for maybe one or two more questions. So can you just remind folks where they can find the emus in the zoo? So if you come to Frankel Park, the emus are located right outside the Aussie aviary. That's where we feed the budgies. Um, so they're right in between the Aussie aviary and the playground giraffe exhibit. Um, and they're also right across from the tropical forest building where the gorillas live. And they share the exhibit with the kangaroos, right? Yes. So yeah, these guys get along mutually. So in the wild, you would actually see emus and kangaroos in the outback together. And they would just be walking around, minding their own business. So here at the zoo, we are able to freely do that. They get along perfectly well. They don't bother each other. And it's a good little mutual mixed species exhibit. Gives you a little taste of what the what you would see if you went to the Australian Outback. Thanks for all the time we have, but I'll just back up so you can okay. sign off. Okay. Alright. Alright, well thank you everyone for joining us today for Zoo to You. Um I hope you learned a little bit more about our emus and had a little bit of appreciative thoughts for them. Um, and feel free to stop by and visit them whenever you want. Like it's a beautiful day here at the zoo, and you'll see them taking baths during these hot summer days, and they're out all year long. So they're very strong, durable birds. They can even handle the cold very well. So any time of year you come here, as long as it's not a blizzard, emus will be out on exhibit.